Hello everybody, welcome back to another x 10 video. Uh, today I'm in the X737 version 5. As you've seen on my YouTube channel, I was uh, actually beta testing this airplane, but I never really did any videos with the cockpit, but now it's finally released, and I am going to do a video with it. I'm actually going to be doing a tutorial on how to start it with cold and dark procedures. I have my checklist all ready and printed out and everything, so... um I'm good to go. So let's go ahead and jump into the cockpit here. Um, welcome aboard. This isn't all with it. It's still a little buggy. I didn't get the uh, FJCC, the uh, UFMC, or uh, X737 FMC, so I just have the XFMC. I know they're all just so similar, but um, yeah. This is a great plug-in, by the way. You can go get it. Um, link will be in the description below. Link will also be in the description below for this airplane. Now, a lot of you have had problems with the ground power turning it on, so I'll show you that in just a second. We're gonna go ahead and turn on the battery. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna go and go buy our checklist after we get it powered up, because my power up isn't on there. So battery on. Select that one to ground power. My um, AC and my DC will stay on standby. Uh, cabin utility utility can come on and IFE passenger and seat. Fasten seatbelt signs, no smoking signs. Now what you do to turn on the ground power, this airplane has a ground power built in. So what you do is there's a little button like there is on every one of them. There's a little button you see just above them and you just click the button and it says ground power available and you'll see the AC volts come up so you go ahead and flick it on and voila you have power to the airplane and it's actually animated not completely but as you can see there is a little cord right here so we're good with that so let's finish powering it up um, Everything seems to be looking okay, but we don't have full ground power and everything. Or not full ground power, but um, full full ground services. So uh, we're going to go and load up some fuel. doesn't matter because I'm not doing a full flight. I'm just going to load up some fuel real quick so we have enough for the APU. Left forward pump comes on is what you're going to do. And I'm going to go and start the APU. You hold it until the EGT right here. I'll show you in a second. EGT gauge will move up right there this gauge right here and it'll go up and you'll start to hear it you'll hear it start so you're gonna turn your position light onto steady not strobe and steady yet because we're not on the runway so this is just your nav light pretty much so um, we're not gonna connect to APU power yet we'll just leave that but we're just using it for pack so we'll turn on the APU bleed right here you can see it right there and the pack should already come on auto but if not you just flick them down auto isolation valve also is already set to auto we'll turn on the recirculation fans now select our um, cabin temperatures I'm not sure why it says that it said that in the beta as well for the uh, ram door full open but anyway cockpit preparation completed light test we'll go ahead and check that now light and enunciator check everything looks fine um, yaw damper on fuel check pumps on we're not going to turn the rest of them on yet until start uh, galley power is on that's the cabin utility and the ground power um, emergency exit lights make sure those are armed which they are armed if they're not, it'll illuminate not armed right there. So um, that's that's fine. Passenger signs on. Seatbelt and no smoking on. A window heat. That also applies for the uh, probe heat. Let's see. Hydraulics normal. We'll leave those for now. Air conditioning and pressurization. Packs, bleeds on and set. So. Um, 37,000, flight level 370, seems like a reasonable altitude since there is no bad weather. Um, 
everything seems to be okay with the weather right now, and we've already checked it, and it seems to be great all the way to Atlanta, which is where we're flying. We're in Chicago here now, so um, we're good there. Autopilot's disengaged. We'll check that. Yes, they're disengaged. Oops. Don't know my buttons yet. Yes, it's disengaged. Auto brake, RTO. That's your auto brake right there. Speed brake, down the tent. Not armed yet. Uh, park brake is set. Light will illuminate. Um, <laughs> rudder and aileron trim, radios and transponder. Free and zero as well as set. Uh, we're not flying on VATSIM or anything today, but uh, yeah, so I will be right back with my voice in just one second. The transition is B and A. It's for Nashville. Yeah, I've flown in there a few times in real life. Uh, we're departing. No, we're not doing departure. Well, actually, we need to set our runway. So let's just do free camera. I know this isn't the best way to do it. I should be using a um airport diagram, but two two left. And my runways are messed up because I didn't fix my scenery yet, so. And all my taxiways and everything are messed up, too. So, 2-2 two, two left. 2-2 two, two left. Execute. No SID. And then we'll set our star, which will be the ILS 9 left. ILS 9 left. With the Raptor 3 arrival. 
Raptor 3 BNA transition execute. There we go. ILS execute. Uh, why is this not showing up here? Oh, that's happened once before on here. We didn't get full power of the plane. I will select this too. Alright, I'll show you exactly what I did here. Um, so ground power, I just turned it off like that. Um, I switched the AC volts to APU generator and we're good there. So yeah. There we go, we have everything now. Turn our airports off. Uh, traffic TCAS and WXR radar. And then you can do that. You push F9 to pull up your thing here. It will not let you do an XFMC, but in a real one, you can do the step button here. Instead of root data, there would be a step button. But uh, anyway. So, uh, anyway, we're good there. Take off from our runway and everything. Everything should be fine right now. So we'll set our initial altitude of 37,000 feet, flight level 370. And we're good. Now, I do not have an, uh, a pushback plugin installed, so I know real 737s don't usually do this, but I'm going to have to do a, um, a power back. So, what, it's not the best thing to do, but I have to do it. So, unless, yeah. I have to do a power back. So yaw damper, we'll go ahead and turn that on. Instruments, X checked, FMS speeds set and checked, FMS speeds. Um, oh, we're not even done with the FMS. Index performance, performance page. Gross weight, reserves, we have about 10.8 in reserves. Cost index of about 35, oops, 35. I always use the 35 cost index, level 370. Limited to 150 nautical miles, we must be heavy. Yep, we're heavy. Select our gross weight again. Thrust limit, oh, we don't need that much. 15D rate, that's about 91.4. This would give us 90. Uh, yeah, we'll go with 15% uh, D rate. Climb, that's fine. Well, we'll actually set it to climb one. Take off data, uh, flaps five. We'll do flaps one. There's our V speeds set. Uh, runway conditions are dry. Check our approach refs. Flap 30, 139. Awesome. That's what we need right there. Flap 30. Never really do um, flap 40 approaches unless you're really heavy. But we're not in this situation. So we can go ahead and get our engine started. Bye. Coming up to our overhead panel. Turning on our hydro... Well, Clear for start. I'll just go ahead and do the checklist. Clear for start. Doors close. Air conditioning packs off. Start pressure. PSI. Anti-collision lights are on. Anti-collision packs off. Just before start, we'll do that. Hydraulic pumps on. Fuel pumps on. Make sure we're not getting the fuel master caution. We're good. Turn this off and back on because it's going to say low pressure. <laughs> All right, packs are off. Duck pressure goes up, APU bleed, and turning one. I'm going to go ahead and do this now so you can see the outside view of the startup. Usually you wouldn't do your... your, um... your fuel yet. 
But I know everything is good, so. Engine started. You see the. Um, I'm not sure what to call them. I call them fribbles, but I know that's not the technical term. Yeah, I have it outside of the plane, the view, because it doesn't look right from inside the plane. You can't really look at it through the window. So I just leave it like that. But anyway, engine is started and stabilized. And we can go in turn two. So all I'm doing is do, using my left mouse, I'm pushing up which will push it in and then turning it left. So what we'll do, I'll show you the proper way to do it. You always start engine two first. You check everything, make sure it's going okay. You see your N1 rising, about 5%. There we go. So we'll wait for about 1.5. So our N1 is rapidly rising and we'll bring our number one fuel cutoff into rich. And you'll see everything is rising. N1 EGT fuel flow. Um, we need to config our center pumps, which are just above the regular fuel pumps right here. But you don't turn on your crossfeed valves. Fuel flow is good. Oil pressure is rising. Oil temperature is, or oil pressure looks good. Oil temperature is perfect and rising. Oil quantity is fine. N2 looks fine. Not sure what this one is here. After start, electrical generators on. Pedo heat, probe heat, same thing. Uh, we'll go ahead and packs back on. And start leaders idle detent. Engineers clearance left side. Taxi clearance obtained. And we're good. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our right engine bleed, which is right here and our left engine bleed and turn off our APU bleed and you see the duct pressure you see it's changing so now we're gonna select our generator bus for engines on and on and, and, then, and then the APU off and off so now we can turn off the APU so that is set up and then this light will go off after the APU is done so our packs are back on uh, we'll go ahead and select this to Gen 2. Leave this on standby power. And you just go through flows pretty much is what they're called. I'm not doing flows right now, but what you do is you just come down. There's certain flows. And then you check everything slowly. Make sure there's no lights. And you just check everything. You go back up. Check everything back down. Back up for every single panel. But... Go ahead and turn on our dome light to dim. Ah, actually, we don't need it. So we'll go ahead and set our flaps to five. You should probably have one set on your joystick, so you do one, two, three for five, and then you can watch it go to five right here. So what we're going to do is on the MFD multifunction display, you push system, and then you can check your flight controls. So spoilers, left, right, up, down, left, right, and we'll check our spoiler-ons. If you don't know what the spoiler-ons are, they are the spoilers, but they go up with the ailerons, as you can see right here. It, they go up to flight detent to help you turn, but the opposing one does not come up. So... We're good there. Everything looks fine. There's no V speeds because we don't have the X737 FMC. Uh, set our IS Mach to about 250. We're going to use LNAV and VNAV, so there's no need to worry about the heading, really. Um, we'll just check everything once again before we go ahead and do our power back. And everything looks fine to me. 37,000. And if you use a SIM brief, and I'll show you right here. You come over to your arrival airport, and then if you hover over it with your mouse, it'll tell you the altitude right there, 1026. So we'll go ahead and set our landing altitude to uh, just round, just round up. So six, you know, you do the math, 150. Um, so yeah. 
What we're going to do is explain as a default button for th number three, and it will arm the speed brakes in case of a rejected takeoff. That's what auto brakes RTO stands for. So anyway, we'll go ahead and do our power back. Alright everybody, so I don't know if you saw that guy walking in front of me while I was doing the power back, but uh, he wasn't the smartest little thing. Um, as you can see, there's still a cord that we're dragging, set our park brake, and that is because I didn't properly turn off the ground power. So you just turn it off, turn the ground power on, turn it on, turn it off, turn it off, and then you turn your everything back on. Your yaw damper will turn off if you change your power source. I don't think it actually does that in real life, but you just turn your um, generator bus ties back on. So anyway, let's go ahead and get out of Chicago. We're going to watch out for this little van here. So I've been doing a lot more flights on VATSIM lately. I've overcome my fear of ATC. I don't know why I was so afraid of getting on the air traffic control things. Or the VATSIM network. Turn our taxi light on here. And this right here is a tiller. And it will stay for you. It's for sharp turns and taxiing. They're in real airplanes if you didn't know that so you can see there's two taxiway lines for every taxiway I just need to get my uh, scenery figured out. I have the Nimbus K Kilo Oscar Romeo Delta scenery Chicago hair let me go ahead and turn this on to uh, VR no, this isn't a SID, so we're not. And you can see our runway and our plane. If we were on a, on ATC, our call sign would be um, two of flight two two three or two of flight two two seven. Uh, two 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 three sounds better though. I usually use two two three or two two seven. Yesterday I did a full flight or the day before. I did a full flight on VATSIM. I didn't record it, but I was American 227, um, full flight San Francisco to Los Angeles. And I've been doing a lot of pattern work on VATSIM as well. I actually had a failure yesterday while doing pattern work. I lost vacuum. I was in a Piper Archer 32, and I lost vacuum, and I didn't have my artificial horizon nor my, oh, what's it called? Ugh, altimeter. I'm just not thinking right. Look left and right at every taxiway because I do have AL traffic on. Or AI, whatever. Although they try to attack you anyway. See, one thing this plane is lacking, which I don't fly with this plane in videos because it's still a little buggy buggy as in not working very well but anyway it should have the realistic things to where it shows you where the N1 will go 
see when you increase the thrust the thrust it just doesn't do it so like you know the flight factor does it oh that's cool if you click right there it'll change alright so where's our toga 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 Uh, I don't think we need the full length, but we're just going to take the full length anyway. I'm not really trying to have an accident. Tango 10, is that what that says? Is that really? Yeah, it's Tango 10 at 3 t or 2 2 left. Wow, that's a. This is such a big airport. Alright, before takeoff, APU off, flight controls checked, already done, done, done. Flaps, green light, rudder aileron, and trap, ugh, stab trim is set. Uh, cabin door locked, takeoff briefing, we'll go ahead and do that now. Um, takeoff briefing, we'll do that at the line, is what it actually says to do. Engine start switches, oh, after the line, that's what we need to do. So, takeoff briefing, we'll go ahead and do that now. We're going to go ahead and take off from Chicago Hair, Kilo Oscar Romeo Delta. If anything happens to go wrong, depending on our current speed, uh, if we're under our V1 speed, we will immediately stop, depending on the situation. And if we are not able to stop after our V1 speed, which we will not do after our V1 speed, we will fly to the nearest airport, which I believe is Chicago Midway. Uh, if everything goes well, we will follow our flight plan to Charlie Mike Sierra Kilo Yankee, and then so on. Does anybody have any questions about our briefing? Which I know nobody does. So at the line, engine start switch is on, which is continuous l um Lights and strobes, auto throttle transponder on. I'll show you your transponder here. You set it to T A R A. But, uh, not actually doing anything. Uh, I'm not gonna hold short because there's no airplanes coming. Alright, we'll go ahead and turn on our landing lights, runway turn off lights, and the position light I showed you. We'll go ahead and set that to strobe and steady, logo light, uh, wing light, and we're good. I love this wing view right here. Alright, I'm not going to turn the packs off because I don't want to overwhelm you, but uh, usually for takeoff and start, you turn off the packs. I believe landing as well, but all right. We're going to set our park brake for a second. Make sure all of our lights are on. Everything's good. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and push in. Turn right to continuous. Come on. Come on. Like I said, this plane is still a little buggy. Hope you don't have a buggy plane. <laughs> Joking. Um, wing anti-ice. Engine anti-ice. The nacelles. And we're good. So, we're good for takeoff. And hold, holding the brakes, pull our engines up to... 40% in one. Let go of the brakes. Set our takeoff power. Ooh, that's a little low. Very windy. V1, rotate, whoa! Oh, I don't know why our gear automatically went up. Go and arm our LNAV and VNAV. 
Anyway, positive rate gear up, gear up, gear off. Flaps to two. Make our left turn to uh, Charlie Mike's here, Kilo Yankee. Oops, forgot our chronometer. That's fine. Very turbulent. After takeoff, cabin crew start work. Yeah, get to work, cabin crew. Air conditioning and pressurization set and checked. Landing gear up and off. Engine start switches off. Flaps up. No lights. Altimeter set. Q and H standard. All right, flaps up. L nav command. V nav. See, that's why I don't fly in this plane. The autopilot's so buggy. I mean, no offense to EADT, but it just... And then it has to... It, it just dives for the ground. So, that's why you won't see me fly in this plane in my videos. Anyway, everybody, thank you for tuning in to my cold and dark tutorial on the X737 version 5. Um, yeah, please come join me for more videos. Please subscribe and hit that like button. Everything you need will be in the description below. Thank you and have a wonderful day.